What is going on guys? So in today's video, I want to do a comparison video between the Intel MacBook Air versus the M1 MacBook Air. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because some people might be able to pick up the Intel version on the used market or from the refurbished store. And I know the changes are subtle, but the differences might, I guess, be a deal breaker for some people. And at the end of the video, I will let you guys know that if you do have an existing Intel MacBook Air, is it worth selling your device and going over to the M1? So let's get started. So probably the biggest difference between both these laptops, and I'm sure you guys already know this watching this video, is the processor. So we have three choices for the Intel-based MacBook. We have the i3, which is the one in front of me, the i5, as well as the i7. On the M1 variant, we have the choice between having seven GPU cores or eight GPU cores. I have the one that has seven GPU cores just because, you know, I don't know if that one extra GPU core is going to be that big of a difference in my workflow. So both models come with eight or 16 gigabytes of memory. The only difference is Apple's calling it unified memory on the M1 MacBook because it is actually baked onto the SoC. So you can expect to have faster performance of RAM on the M1 MacBook. Next up are the ports and on the outside they look completely identical. So on the Intel based MacBook Air we have a headphone jack and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. But on the M1 MacBook Air we have a headphone jack as well and then we have two USB 4 with Thunderbolt capabilities. So next up is the display and to me they both look pretty much identical but do keep in mind that on Intel based MacBook Airs they've always used the sRGB in terms of the display profile. And then on the new M1 MacBook Airs they've given us the P3 wide gamut. So I will say with this new addition that this does bring a larger audience over to the MacBook Air if you do need to have color accuracy in terms of your workflow. Next up is the keyboard and they feel identical. I can't tell them apart, but in terms of functionality, there are a few differences. So on the M1 MacBook Air, we now have a dedicated emoji button. Moving on to the function row key, F4, F5, and F6 have been changed. So instead of opening up Launchpad on F4, we now have the option to bring up Spotlight. F5 and F6 used to control your backlit on the keyboard, but now you have a dedicated dictation button as well as a do not disturb button. Now for me personally, I would have preferred if F5 and F6 would have stayed the same and I would have been happy if Launchpad got replaced with do not disturb because I'm a person who typically likes to use do not disturb when I'm trying to work and be in the zone. I really do miss having the option to control my backlit keyboards because some days I don't want the brightness to be too bright at night and other days I ra rather have it be really dim. So I hope in the next uh, variations of the new M1 MacBooks that they go back because in terms of dictation, I don't think a lot of people use that. Um, and then spotlight search, you pretty much memory muscle command space if you wanna open that up. Next, I wanna talk about the trackpads and to me, they both feel identical. I don't think Apple changed anything in terms of the trackpad and honestly, they don't need to. Trackpads still feel super high quality. Haptic engine and feedback, I think they're both still exactly the same. So you're not missing out on anything in terms of the M1 or the Intel version. So next I wanna talk about the microphone and camera. It's supposedly better on the MacBook M1 and I would say that it does actually look slightly better than the Intel version with the AI and software optimization that it's doing. And UPS is here and I know exactly what I'm getting. Um, but this is what I'll say. In terms of if you're using this for like video conferencing, you will notice that you do look a little bit sharper than the Intel version. But this is why I'm saying the Astrid. If you are the person in the small box, you look identical. But if you're talking and it shows your face on the entire screen, that the M1 MacBook Air still looks slightly better, but to me, it's kind of blurry still. So I'm gonna go get my package. All right, so this is the camera and microphone test between the Intel MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Air. Now, Apple did say that they improved the software optimization inside the camera department. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But to me, it does look like the camera is in fact better on the M1 MacBook Air. In terms of the microphone, you guys can tell me how it sounds. I'll have to, I guess, listen listen to it back. There seems to be a lot less noise on the M1 MacBook Air camera, even though it still is 720p. Like I said, if you are in good lighting, which I am right now, I have natural sun coming in, the camera does look noticeably better than the MacBook Air using the Intel-based chip. There's just, like I said, there's a lot more noise going on. It looks 
considerably more blurry. So in terms of the camera department, I do want to give it over to the M1 MacBook Air. So next I want to talk about the unlocking methods and they both still use Touch ID and you can't unlock it with your Apple Watch as well. Apple does have this feature called Instant Wake. So whenever you close the laptop, even for a couple hours, even days, when you open it back up, you're essentially back into your computer. Now, if your computer has been closed for a couple hours, you will be prompted to log in through the lock screen. But the thing with Instant Wake is, even if I close this and open it back up, it's still like, it's still pretty much Instant Wake. Personally for me, I haven't noticed that big of a difference. Even if I do have the MacBook Air Intel version closed for an hour, a couple of days, they both still, it's basically instant wake for both of them. I, I really can't tell the difference between the two. Um, it's not noticeable in my workflow, but you know, for some people, the instant wake, it is a uh, game changer for me. Now, in terms of build quality, they're both still using the exact same unibody design, but I will open up these laptops later to show you the differences on the inside. Um, but build quality is still exceptional in terms of the unibody design with all aluminum. It's just best in class, really. It, there's no flex whenever you type on the keyboard. This design, like I said, it's been tested for almost over a decade now. And there have been subtle changes over the years, but in terms of build quality and design, exactly the same. Last thing I wanna mention is the Wi-Fi because this is something that they didn't really talk about. So there is now, I keep pointing, there's Wi-Fi 6 in the M1 MacBook Air and all MacBooks moving forward. And Intel versions are still using Wi-Fi 5. Now, if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router, I don't really think this applies to you, but when you do decide to upgrade for the future, which is pretty much what people are planning for, and you do decide to move over to Wi-Fi 6, and you have a lot of devices, or you're really far away from the router, this is where the M1 MacBook Air is going to shine. But for people who are still using a Wi-Fi 5 router, and your speeds aren't tremendously high, um, I will say that you're probably not going to notice a, dif a difference up front. So looking at the inside of both these laptops, it's a very different experience. The battery sizes are exactly the same. Like I said, in terms of the haptic engine, they both look to be exactly the same. I do like how on the inside, Apple does use the same um, coloring in terms of the material, but the biggest difference is this controversial design in the older MacBook Air that came out earlier this year is that the fan was not attached to the heatsink. Um, whereas on the M1 MacBook, there is no fan at all. So this computer is dead silent. And overall, this computer just tends to be cooler it's just, honestly, I don't want to use the word, but it's like magic. It's crazy, the performance that they're getting out of this chip with no fan and the temperatures. Now, in terms of the logic board itself, as you can see, there isn't much to it. As you can see, it's a little bit longer just because, you know, we have to add in that RAM as well. But this is just, it's a smaller form factor overall where the logic board on here extends out all the way. Now, the thing people are probably wondering is why am I not talking about performance? Well, because performance is a very big factor when looking at these laptops. It's no secret that the M1 MacBook Air is blowing the MacBook Air out the water. So in terms of performance, of course, the M1 MacBook Air is going to be tremendously better. There are plenty of videos online about it. But here's what I'll say. If you have an Intel MacBook Air, should you go and sell it and go buy yourself an M1 MacBook Air? And I would say that no, because this is my mom's MacBook Air. And I asked her, does she love her laptop? And she says she loves it. And that's all that really matters. If the laptop is able to do everything that you need it to, and Apple is still going to be supporting Intel chips moving forward, because like I said, it doesn't make sense for Apple to just cannibalize their existing Intel MacBook owners. And you know, if this laptop is able to do everything that it can do for you, then there's no reason that you should go panic sell this as if it's a stock and try and buy this M1 MacBook Air because you're getting FOMO from all these videos you're seeing online. So the other thing I wanna mention are people who originally bought the MacBook Air didn't really buy it for professional use. And I think that's what people are trying to do now with the M1 MacBook Air. Most people do things through the browser 
and these Intel chips are still pretty capable of doing a lot of things through the browser. They're not, they're not downloading professional grade applications or trying to do a lot of software development on these laptops. That's what the Pro is usually for. So when you look at the capabilities of what the M1 chip can do, that's where people are like, okay, maybe I can actually use this as my main laptop with all this incredible performance. The big difference though, I will say is the battery life. The battery life on the MacBook Air has always been good. It's always been the best until these M1 MacBooks came out. The battery life on this is incredible. I think it's one and a half times better. I think this one has 12 hours of battery life rated, and this one has 18 hours of battery life, which is incredible. But with that being said, I haven't heard my mom complain about the battery life on the MacBook Air at all. Um, it's just that you have, it's like electric car essentially. You have more range or more flexibility of what you can do without your charger. So people want to talk about temperature and fan noise and obviously the MacBook Air sounds much louder and runs a lot hotter, the Intel version, than the M1 because there's no fan and overall this chip is just really efficient. It doesn't have to pull as much power to get the performance. I don't think a lot of people are going to be unhappy with their purchase because they bought this computer for the right reason. The only real reason you would be unhappy is because if it's not able to run the applications you're running them in, I guess, say, uh, quiet and cool environment. So the target audience for the MacBook Air has always been that if you are a light user, that this laptop is going to be perfect for you. So should you feel bad that you bought an Intel-based MacBook Air a couple months ago? Uh, I mean, if it was me, I would feel bad, but I wouldn't feel bad for that long because, I mean, what can you really do? You bought the laptop because you needed it. If you didn't need the laptop, then yeah, I would feel bad for you. Um, but you know, like I said, you just gotta be happy with the purchase that you bought it at, at that intended time. I still do think for like a vast majority of people, like there is a reason why the MacBook Air is so popular is because of the price and the things that you can do on it. Like, like I said, if you're a very light user on the internet or just using a computer, it's the perfect laptop for you. But now the value that you're getting out of the MacBook Air, it's just better in, every single way. There is no downside with the M1 MacBook Pro. It is an improvement across the board. So, <sighs> Intel-based people, don't feel bad. Feel bad just a little bit, not forever. It's not good for you. But M1 is now king of Ultrabook laptops. Maybe speaking too soon, AMD laptops are still good in their rights um, in terms of performance, especially the value you're getting out of those laptops as well. But this is for sure the best MacBook Apple has ever made in quite some time, at least in my generation. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this comparison video between the Intel-based MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Air. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, guys, appreciate every sub, like, and comment. Much love.